All right, hello, this is Sam Welker from thinkparticle.com back at you with another tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about something called oscillation. Um, fair warning, I've misspelled it in all of the scene files. It actually has a second L right there. Um, so, you know, less important, but something to be aware of. Um, so what is oscillation? Well, let's go ahead and go into the tools, the doodle tool, and I'll show you. Oscillation, in the sense that we're going to be using it, is, uh, well, we're going to be making sine waves, and that is like that. Uh, what is a sine wave? It's a constant up and down, and, uh, well, it continues, uh, it moves up and down in the y-axis as we move forward in the z-axis or the x-axis, something like that. That's our approach today. Now, oscillation means that you're just going up and down, and, or positive, negative, um, in value. So I think it'll be easier to show you just a few examples of setup. So here we go. The first example is uh, this emitter that moves in the, I believe, z-axis while moving up and down on the y-axis with some thinking particles. And we get this you know, render right here with some p-shade particles. Um, here we go. And again, it goes up and down. And that's all driven by math. Um, in this particular case, I'm using the formula effector. So, or actually in all of the cases, but we'll move on to that in a little bit. Um, right here, we have another example. This one, um, now this is a, you know, a little stretch um, example. It's not exactly necessarily uh, the right way to do this effect, but it's what I did. On the right, you can see that we have the formula effector, and on the left, we have plane effectors, and the strength of each plane effector is driven by a formula effector. So let's just look at that real quick. These move 90 degrees in the positive and then in the negative. Uh, these just move in the uh, positive, um, or actually, I believe, in the negative, um, and you get this different effect. So let's go ahead and look at one more. And this one uses a sine function, but also a cosine function, and you get this swirling effect. So, um, and it goes at a speed that will actually, um, well, it draws about, you know, out here it draws maybe six to eight points per circle. So you can see these straight lines because it's a cubic interpolation. Um, but it will uh, go ahead and draw these lines out um, using the... Uh, Espresso setup we have with these uh, these formula effectors. So let's go ahead and drop into a new scene, and we're going to start by just deciding we're going to we're going to do that last example. We're going to go ahead and grab a null object and name it Espresso. We're going to right click on it, go in to the Cinema 4D tags, and go down to Espresso. Okay. Now we don't need to be in there yet. We do want to set up the scene, so let's grab a null object and we'll call this the um, let's call it the uh, trace point because we're going to be tracing that point. Now we're going to use MoGraph and we're going to go grab a tracer and that's going to trace the trace point. Um, I'm going to use cubic interpolation and uniform we're going to use maybe six points to start off with. Okay. Now we're going to need a formula effector. Um, I have all of mine up here but we'll just grab them from up here. Okay, and we're going to have to duplicate that, and we're going to call it formula x and formula y. And formula y, we're going to change to cosine. Now, uh, right here, it has the formula. You don't need to worry about the formula right now. Um, just see that you have sine and cosine right here at the moment. And these all have variables down here that you can use. Um, you can use uh, position, rotation scale. You can learn more about this by just going into the help menu, but um, about these specific ones. Uh, you have project time, and we're going to take both of these and make the project time 0.25, and we're going to leave the frequency as is. Um, so let's talk about those real quick for those of you that don't know what that means. Here would be an example of time. If you have uh, fast, uh, fast, um, if it goes fast, you know, at say 1 instead of 0.25, it'll go fast. It'll draw fast. Um, if you have a slower time, it will draw slower, and you'll get more you know, uh, waves in there. 
Now, uh, let's go ahead and show a different example. This is frequency. Now, if you have the same speed across, but you have a higher frequency, you're going to have more waves. So, there you go. So that's the formula effector for you. The way we're going to use it today is we're going to drop it in to our Expresso. We're going to open the X pool, which by the way can be found right here. We're going to drop down uh, motion graphics and get sample. We're going to grab the effector port and drag that over here to get the object port out of the formula effector. So if you don't know how Expresso works, basically you have these nodes. This is a node that represents the object, the formula X object. We're going to take that object and put it into the sample node that's going to sample the motion graphics data. And basically, what this is doing is it's taking our effector and taking the value of the uh, effector, the strength value, and we're going to output that. And we're going to use something from the calculate area called a range mapper, which is probably one of our best friends in this particular case quite a useful little tool. So let's go ahead and start by setting it, setting the output upper to 100 and we can turn off use spline. Okay. Now uh, that is just set up so we can go ahead and drag in the trace point. Okay, We're going to drag it down and go to the position X because we're using the X right now. Then we're going to also allow or check for the coordinate position of Y. So basically we're going to use another object node. We're going to go into the coordinates and we're going to go down to the position and track the position. So let's connect these. So a range mapper, by the way, for those of you that don't know, takes an input value and it takes a lower and upper value and it will map it to the output lower and upper value. So now we're going to duplicate these three nodes right here. Now uh, what I did was I went into the full screen mode, by the way. Um, the shortcut for that is control tab. Um, you can also click up here and go to full screen mode. Okay. So we have our formula object again, our sample and our range mapper. We're going to drag that into the position Y. So now we're going to change this object right here by dragging in the formula Y to the reference. You can also drag that onto this little gray, dark gray area right here where it says object. So now we actually have enough set up so that we can go ahead and start drawing lines or drawing circles. So now it's using math and drawing a circle. So we can go ahead and change the speed. So now it goes a little faster and it'll get a little repetitious. Okay, now we're going to make this a little more advanced real, real quick just to go ahead and expand on what we already have. We're going to take the time node, we're going to use a range mapper again, and we're going to set it to the Z position. Now let's go ahead and set these values as we feel we'd like to use. So we're going to be using 1 to 50 right now. Let's try turning it up. 1 to 250. And now we're drawing these lines. Okay, let's set this to 2. We've turned up the frequency. And this would be a good way to model something if you wanted to model a helix. You know, if you didn't want to use the helix right there. Um, procedural modeling. You can also use this to render with hair. So now let's go ahead and make this grow with time. Okay. Now what does that mean? That means we're going to go to the calculate area and grab a math add node. We're going to change this value to multiply. We're going to duplicate it and drag in these output values of the range nodes, or range mapper nodes and we're going to take in the time value actually we're going to take in the time range mapper value drag these over and replace the values that they currently have out of x and y okay we're going to duplicate these right here again the time range mapper value and we're going to use one for the growth of the uh, x and y and then one for the distance of z so we're going to use the X and Y, we're going to make the output upper 
50. So it'll grow, well, maybe that's a little much. So, yep, definitely too much. So now we're using the range mapper to use time. And as time progresses, this gets bigger. So let's go ahead and add some more frames. So it's going to grow. And now we're using math and a tracer to do fun things like growing splines. And as you can see, I'm rendering it, but it's doing nothing because we haven't actually set anything to render. So we're going to go ahead and add a render tag. So what we did was right click, went to hair, render. Then we're going to create a shader, hair material, and drag it on. Let's go ahead and go in and turn off specular, make it a single color and change the thickness value so it's constant. So, there you go. Now it grows. And we can change the intermediate points so it's subdivided and we can make it every, you know, 5 degrees you get a point and then every 3 centimeters you get a point. So it will subdivide as such. Now it's going to keep going and growing, and it doesn't change as it was earlier with the uniform. I don't know if you saw that, but it was in slightly changing. Now it's just going to stay constant. So there you go. That's a great way to build splines like these um, and have them animate. Uh, let's go ahead and open up another scene file real quick, and we're going to go back to that last one. Uh, by the way, what I'm doing is going to window, um, changing between these right here. I have taken projects right here and placed it in my interface. So we're going to go back to project 3, untitled 3, and grab the Expresso and the X and the Tracer Point. We're going to copy it. We're going to go paste it right here. We're going to go in and get rid of this. Okay, so now we've cleaned up our Espresso, so we didn't have to remake it, and we'll go through that in a second. And let's go ahead and change this value that it affects to Y. So we'll rename it, and then we'll go ahead and get rid of that port by double-clicking on the blank circle. We're going to take this port right here and drag the line over to the blue square, go to coordinates, position, position Y. Okay, now we're going to have the Y axis controlled over time, like that. We're going to take the trace point, and we'll grab a tracer object, which I have in my interface. And we're going to, again, set up the hair render so we can see it. We'll just do that really simply, really quickly. Okay, so we can do that. So what we're doing is we're using these values right here, controlled by range mappers, to control the frequency and the, uh, the magnitude of each of these waves. So now we can use this value right here, the second range mapper, to control the Z distance over time. We can use right here the project time value to change the rate at which it goes. And we can use this range mapper to change the height value. Alright, so basically what we're using is, in a nutshell, the formula factor, the sample node, and we're dragging that into a range mapper, multiplying it by range mapped time, and then putting it into the Y value of the trace point. So that might sound complicated, but really what it is is we're taking the strength value of the formula. So basically this formula's strength, whatever the number is right here. Then we're going to drag it into the sample effect or the sample node. And then we're going to output that into the range mapper, which we're basically just using math right here to convert the number 1 to 150 and 0 to 0 and anything in between is just mapped accordingly. So 0.5 would be 75. Then we're going to multiply that by time, 
times a range mapper. In this case, it's actually just identical to what time would be. And then we're going to put that as the position y. Then we're taking time times the range mapper to give the value of the z position. So that allows you to get this effect right here. Okay. Now one last thing is if you wanted to duplicate this, and offset it so that they're not identical. Let's go ahead and set this up again. Okay. So if you want to duplicate this so they're not identical, so one goes one way and one goes another. Um, and what I mean by that is uh, so they don't just go straight up, so you offset the value you can go ahead and right here after the T is where you're going to do that. You're going to add a decimal value, anything between 0 and 1. So if we add a 0.5 on the second one, we're going to get an opposite value. So it's going to do that. It's going to basically mirror the original effect. If we do a 0.25, we're going to get a partial offset. So it's going to well, lag a little behind, as it seems. So let's go ahead and watch this grow over time a little bit more. Okay, And that's what I did in this right here. Basically, I took the plane effectors, and these all have a strength controlled in Expresso right here, very simply, by these formula effectors, which each one has a different offset. This is the original formula effector. This one has a 0.25 offset. This has a 0.5 and this has a 0.75. Okay, and then all of these have the same project time. So if I was to change this project time, it would you know, act slower. If I change it to 0.75, it's gonna go a lot faster. If I change it to one, it's gonna go fast. So anyways, there you go. Those are some examples of how to do oscillation. I hope you guys learned something. If you have any questions, go ahead and get in touch. Sam at thinkparticle.com or Sam Walker TV on Twitter. And make sure to keep coming back to thinkparticle.com for more tutorials. Thanks, and have a great day.